six o'clock in the morning here. The temperature is about one degree or something like that. So you'll forgive me if I don't dolly on this subject, um, important as it is. I'd like to speak to you about alarms on the Gardner engine. Uh, this is a very, very simple subject, but a very important subject. I can't emphasize how important this is. I don't know how many times my own poor 5LW engine has been saved because I had alarms fitted. And I had allowed the engine to overheat, the alarms went off, and luckily I was able to save, to save the engine. Um, <clears throat> Okay, the Gardner's an incredibly reliable engine, very, very simple, very seldom do things go wrong. But things do go wrong. And invariably, it's a problem with a human being, not with the engine. Human beings forget to do things. and um, They forget to put in coolant, and they forget to put in um, <clears throat> antifreeze, and they forget to put in oil. So, um, alarms. Now, why would, where would we want alarms on a Gardner? Uh, common sense tells you really we need an alarm for temperature if the engine overheats. Um, perhaps also temperature if the engine is going to be frozen in a different context. Um, and we want to make sure that the oil pressure doesn't drop below some set point. So let's consider temperature first of all. Now you can get all sorts of fancy temperature switches that will go on to the water rails here. Um, they're, they're not expensive, very easy to wire up. But my own favorite is the simple domestic pipe stat. They're not expensive at all. Again, very easy to wire up. Um, they can be wired in such a way that they'll switch on a pump or they'll switch on an alarm. And they can be wired in such a way that they're normally on or normally off. So they're very flexible. And the big advantage to, of them, for me, is that you can test them. At any point, you can simply go to your engine, adjust this knob here, and if you adjust it low enough, the alarm will come on. So you can test the alarm every month, every day if you want. Now, some people might argue that that's a disadvantage because somebody could come along and meddle with the knob. Uh, it's easy enough to take that knob off, it just pulls off. Uh, but I'm sure you can get around that. I still I suggest that the advantages outweigh the disadvantages. Primarily cost. So I've got one fitted in here. I'll show you a close-up now uh, of a pipe stack fitted on the top water rail. It might be better to have something stronger than cable ties securing the pipe stack here. On a 4LW here. So, the second one then is uh, oil pressure. Now, oil pressure is not quite so simple. In oil pressure, we've got to fit uh, a specific uh, switch. And in the, the LW engines, we can fit the oil pressure, either the oil pressure sender, the switch in other words, here or up here, or we can fit all manifolds there and put them in a multitude of places. Switches are not expensive. You'll see this one here has got an adjustable screw in it. That's really quite useful because you can set the pressure at which the alarm will come on. And that avoids the issue of the alarm coming on whenever you've just switched on the engine. Uh, but generally speaking, I'm inclined to leave them at zero anyway. Now, <clears throat> the alarms themselves as you can imagine, there's a multitude of alarms out there, and they're not expensive. Uh, some are more flexible than others. So, um, this is the first example that I want to show you. Um, it costs about, I think it's about £50 or something like that. Um, the advantage of that alarm is that it can be set up in such a way that it will detect uh, either... Uh, over temperature or low oil pressure. In one case, it'll be a flashing light and a flash, um, um, a, um, a pulsing sound. Uh, and on the other occasion, it'll be a steady bright lamp 
and the steady siren sound. So they really are quite flexible. We would, maybe a wee bit expensive at, at 50 quid, um, but you're only fitting one. So they are normally my favorite. Now, this other one here is really quite inexpensive, not expensive at all. Uh, and it's very loud, but it doesn't have a flashing, a flashing light. So now I'll show you examples of the two. Uh, I have to switch on my power pack here, which is a little bit noisy, I'm afraid. So you'll have to bear, forgive me about that. You hear that? No problem. And you'll see the lamp, no problem. Uh, the point is that <clears throat> you want the alarm to be loud because you could be out on deck on your boat whenever something goes wrong. You might not necessarily be at your wheel or at your console or in your wheelhouse. So you need it to be loud enough so that you can hear it even if you're down below in the engine room or if you're out on deck somewhere. It needs to be loud. So that's the, uh, the flashing, relatively expensive one. Now we'll consider the, uh, <coughs> the less expensive version. <coughs> so there you are, those are the comparisons. <coughs> not worth skimping over it, and it's not worth taking the risks uh, for all the expense and for the very little trouble there is wearing them up. If anyone needs a wearing diagram for one of these, I, if you give me a shout, I'll, I'll, I'll let you, I'll draw you up one. Um, now, um, some people might argue that there is another disadvantage to the, to the pipe step, in that the pipe step is set up for AC usage. They're designed for work on AC, whereas of course the voltage in a boat is um, I'm distracted by a starling flying up into my ceiling here. Um, a boat is DC, but I would argue that that's not a significant problem because the alarm is only activated whenever it's called to be activated, which will be <coughs> once or twice in a lifetime. So I don't see that be a, being a problem. <clears throat> the reason why <clears throat> DC circuits are, are harder on switches like this is that they arc more, there's a more significant arc across the contact points whenever they switch. It's less so in ASC, but I don't think it's anything to worry about. Um, Another point to consider is that um, because the oil pressure alarm is set to come on whenever you've got low oil pressure, every time you switch on your ignition, the alarm's going to go off. Now, that's hard on your ears. But because gardeners are so easy to start, as soon as the engine fires up, the alarm will go off. So I don't see that being a problem. And it's also reassuring because, again, you know that the alarm's working because it'll come on every time you pull up, every time you switch on the, the ignition, it'll come on. So I don't really see that as being a problem. Um, another issue that I've come across here is that I have seen in some systems where, on boats in particular, they've got a switch which isolates the alarms. In other words, the skipper comes on, switches off the alarms, then switches on his engine, fires up his engine, and then reactivates the alarms again. I don't think that's a good idea because it's so easy to forget and you'll, you'll disable the alarms and you'll forget to put them back on again and that could be quite an expensive mistake. So again that's all I've got for you on alarms. Um, um, if you have any questions please let me know but it's, it's a very simple but really crucially important uh, problem. <laughs>